Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, town board work session of the town of Ossining, uh for March 1st, 2016. Would you please join me and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, justice for all. We're sorry that we were not able to get a bigger space for this evening, but uh, we had anticipated that this meeting was going to be later in the month, and we ended up having to move it up earlier so that we could accommodate um, all of the pieces that need to take place before the new um, uh, tax roll is eventually set. So um, hopefully if there are empty seats, there's an empty seat up here. If there are other empty seats, if you could raise your hand if there's an empty seat next to you. and folks who are standing look for the hands that are raised and find the empty seats and then you'll make more room for the people in the back so come on in don't be shy thank you you'll all be more comfortable and there'll be more room for others if you would like if you could come on if you if you're and standing maybe you could stand over here on the sides um, so that more people can we don't have a fire hazard we don't want a fire hazard here thank you sorry again so good evening everyone it's so nice to see so many of you out tonight I know we are all here because we care so much about our town and villages and of course we all want to continue to be able to afford to live in our homes and operate our businesses tonight our work session will be the culmination of a two-year process to bring our assessment roles into the 21st century Osnain partnered back in 2014 with a number of other municipalities, including North Salem, Greenberg, and Yonkers, who were also interested in making sure that property values were not almost 50 years outdated, but were current and could therefore be counted on to adequately reflect the value of the properties we own, while also assuring fair and equitable assessments for our taxpayers. The town saved money by getting joint bids from appraisal companies as well as a monitor, which netted us a better price because it covered a greater number of parcels being valued by the same company. We contracted with Tyler Technologies for the appraisal services. Over the last two years, the process has include, included many, many public meetings, information sessions, private conferences, with homeowners and property owners and visits by data collectors to our homes and businesses, schools and places of worship to account for every parcel of property in the town of Ossining. We have completed the data collection process and the analysis is complete as well, although not all the numbers are final yet. You will hear more about that later. Tonight we will hear from the town of Ossining's assessor, Fernando Gonzalez, as well as John Wollum from the New York State Office of Real Property Tax Services, our monitor Thomas Donato from Haberman Associates, and our appraiser Melissa Baer from Tyler Technologies. They will take us through the analysis and next steps in terms of timing of the distribution of impact notices, opportunities for you to have an informal meeting if you do not agree with the new values or believe they do not accurately reflect your actual property and the finalization of the role as well as the formal grievance pro procedure if you are still not satisfied after their presentation I will ask the board to comment then we will open up the floor for questions and comments from the audience because as we anticipated we have such a large crowd tonight we are going to ask that each person coming to the microphone limit their questions or comments to two minutes and then have a seat until everyone gets a chance to comment once before coming back up if you have additional questions or comments. We have established a sign-in sheet, which is up at the podium, so you can put your name down and not have to stand up while waiting. We will call you in the order on the sheet. When you approach the mic, please start by giving your name and street address for our records. We understand this is an issue which people are very invested in. But we would appreciate if everyone is patient while the board has discussion before the public comment begins. Again, I thank everyone here 
including students from Austin High School participation in government class. You have chosen a very interesting night to participate, and we welcome your questions and comments as well. I will share additional announcements at the end of tonight's meeting uh, based on how long we go in an effort to get to the meat of the meeting and why everyone has come out tonight. So unless any of my board colleagues have anything additional to add, I would like to turn this over to Town Assessor Fernando Gonzalez. Does anybody else have anything to add before we begin? Okay, yeah, just if you're coming in and if you could encourage others who come in, if you'd like to stand on the side, if you want to sit on the floor, that's always good. You can practice your yoga poses. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And uh, once again, thank you for the opportunity to discuss uh, the, not only the reassessment project, but also a few uh, housekeep housekeeping announcements that I must make. As you know, we are processing the 2016 roll, which is the new values, and a large part of that process is processing exemptions. So this is the time. Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. As I was saying, a large uh, part of the uh, of the functions of the assessment office is processing exemptions, and we are in the middle of renewing or uh, processing new exemptions. So I just wanted to make an announcement, remind everyone, particularly our seniors, that uh, the deadline to submit your renewals. Uh, is May 1st. Also, anyone who has recently moved to the town, please uh, apply for the STAR exemption. Again, the deadline is May 1st. Uh, the veterans ex exemptions do not need renewal unless it's an uh, eligible funds veteran, veteran that has additional funds. But, um, of course, m most everyone here, everyone is here for the purpose of the reassessment information. Uh, and the next six weeks is a very important part of this process. Is the disclosure process. You will get your notices. And if you find that the estimated value of your property is not what it should be or is not what you could sell it for, please make an appointment with Tyler immediately. We will have about four weeks of time to, to, uh, for you to make an appointment. The, Meeting will be will be held at the library in one of the meeting rooms. Uh, we we are going to have appraisers available to, in order to accomplish that that task. Uh, it's very important that you take advantage of this opportunity uh, during this time of the year. Is when all the as assessment review companies are trying to drum up business, and you will be getting notices from them trying to procure your business. Please do not be confused. The town's notice will be on a town envelope clearly marked assessment tax information. If you have any questions, please give us a call or call the Tyler office. Uh, we will first have um, Mr. John Wallen from the New York State Office of Real Property Tax Services give us uh, an overview of what the impact of the assessment in total will be. And then we will have Melissa Bayer from Tyler Technologies give us uh, a presentation on to about what is next and what, what is coming next and the process to follow. So, John, please. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to try doing this. I know I have to speak into the microphone. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for having me. Um, what we have here, this will be very short, I promise, because I know that the town board has to have a little bit of a discussion, and certainly we want you all to have time for to have questions as well. Uh, what we have essentially tonight is we have a preliminary set of assessments for 2016, as Fernando said. And I know, I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect many folks here tonight are probably interested in uh, something that was discussed at a lot of town hall meetings at which I was present, which is the homestead option, and whether that's going to be adopted. 
So what we have tonight is an overview that I think will allow the board to make a decision on, on whether it feels it needs to pursue the homestead option. First, we have a chart uh, that you'll see up there. I apologize if it's a little hard to see, and I'll, tr I'll try to review it. This is meant to represent the shares of taxable value that major property types in the town of Ossining composed of the role. And again, this is prior to the reassessment. So, okay. And blue, which is the biggest share, as you'll see here, 69% is residential. The next biggest share, 22% in yellow, is commercial. There is 1%, that's vacant land, and about 8% are the condominiums. And again, this is taxable value before the reassessment. So the next slide is meant to represent, and again, this is preliminary because as Fernando and as the supervisor mentioned, values are still subject to change and they will be changing. But this is meant to represent the breakdown, again, by major property type from the preliminary 2016 assessments without Homestead. And what you'll see here is that residential, which was 69%, now represents about 70%. So it's a pretty minimal change. The commercial properties represent 21%. Vacant land is still about 1%, and the condominiums, again, represent about 8% of value. So if we just toggle back and forth, you can see that the shares of taxable value before and after the new numbers are considered are very, very close to one another. Again, this is a scenario without homestead. Why do I emphasize this? Because typically, when other communities have adopted homestead or considered the adoption of homestead as part of a reassessment, there typically has been a pretty noticeable or significant change in the share of taxable value borne by residential properties. Now again, here, and I'll just go back and forth one more time, before the reassessment, oops, sorry, before the reassessment, Residential values were about 69%. With the preliminary values, residential values represent 70%. So while it's not my place to offer an opinion, I, I would say reasonably there's really not much of a difference there. I'm also going to show one additional slide here. This would show how the, how the shares would appear to change in a scenario with Homestead. Residential values, again, at the aggregate, go down to about 65%. Commercial stays about 20%. Vacant land stays about 1%. And the condominiums, because again, remember in the homestead scenario, the condominiums would be valued on a market value basis, which is different than the way they are presently valued. They would go to 14% of the town's taxable value. So this is really, again, the information by which the town would make a decision as to whether there is a need to adopt Homestead. And uh, there's one slide here. Again, it, it shows up a little smaller, so it probably will be a little more difficult for people to see. But again, just by comparison, the shares without Homestead, well, the shares before the reassessment, that's really what I should be identifying this first one as, 69% residential, and the current shares based on reassessment values without the adoption of homestead, residentials are 70%, commercials go down 1%, vacant land and condominiums stay about the same, 1% and 8% respectively. So what's the next step here? Uh, oh, okay, this is a Tyler presentation, forgive me, so I'll just stop right there. I want to emphasize what Fernando and what Supervisor Levenberg were saying a little bit earlier. Uh, I know the town board will have a, a brief discussion, but again, relative to next steps, I can't emphasize this enough. Probably in about two weeks' time, all property owners in the town will be getting a notice 
I believe it'll be coming in a town of Ossining envelope, and it'll have something stamped on the outside to indicate its importance so you don't misidentify it for junk mail. It's going to contain two pieces of paper. One is going to be what's known as an assessment disclosure notice. That's going to list your former assessment last year and your new preliminary assessment for 2016. It's also going to have a little grid by which you can gauge the relative tax impact of, this, of your new value along with everyone else's value. Essentially, the process for doing this, for generating these notices, is it takes the 2015 tax levies, so that would be the tax bill you paid in April of 2015, town, county, and special district. Uh, for village residents, it would be the June village bill from Briarcliff Manor, and I, I know the village of Ossining is on a different schedule, so I believe it would be the January 2014 village bill, because these all had to be generated through the same assessment role, and I'll speak about that in a moment. And of course, the school taxes that were generated in September of 2015. Even though each of those are a different tax dollar amount from a different taxing jurisdiction, all of those taxes were actually generated from the town's 2014 final roll. Okay? So that's the common denominator there. And what's done in this process is those 2015 tax levies, the amount that each village, the county, the town, and the school districts needed to raise for 2015, that was redistributed using the preliminary values from 2016. And again, that's meant, it's not meant to be an estimate of future taxes. Excuse me. It's simply meant to be a redistribution so you can get a general sense how your new preliminary value would affect taxes if everybody's preliminary value were in effect. I need to stress that these are still subject to change. In fact, as, as Fernando said, and I would strongly encourage this, everyone should make it a point to look very carefully at your new preliminary 2016 assessed value. If you think it represents a reasonable market value as of the town's valuation date, which is July 1st, 2015, okay, that's, that's great. If, however, you think it's too high or you think it's wrong in some way, you want to follow the directions on the notice. There will be a 1-800 number that you can call to arrange a, an, what's known as an informal review meeting with representatives from Tyler Appraisal, Tyler Technologies. These informal review meetings can only be held with a Tyler representative, and you're going to need to call to make an appointment by April 8th. The appointments actually will be held, I believe, through the end of April, possibly into the first week in May, but you do need to call to schedule an appointment no later than April 8th. Most of the meetings will be held during the daytime at the Ossining Library from 9 to 5, but there will be limited evening and Saturday appointments available. Again, Tyler will handle the scheduling. So, again, most importantly, if you disagree with your preliminary value for 2016, when you make an appointment, you want to bring something to that meeting that would offer your point of view as to what you think the value is. Folks from Tyler will have available all the information that was used to generate your value, including the inventory. If you think your inventory is incorrect, you want to bring something to say, hey, look, you got that wrong. Folks from Tyler may need to revisit the property to verify that. If you think anything about the value is wrong or that there were certain value influences to your property that were not taken into consideration, you want to bring something to show, to show the Tyler up to say, look, here's something or a number of things that I think you did not take into account. Again, very, very important that you do that. Everybody who comes in for an informal review meeting will get a notice in the mail probably around June 1st when the town files its tentative role explaining the decision. No decision will be made on the spot, but Tyler staff will take the review very seriously uh, I'll also add that if you feel you are unable to come in physically or an appointment, you can certainly mail something into Tyler 
with information that you want them to consider, and they will treat that with the same weight as if you physically came in for an informal review meeting. Again, the result of your informal review will be, will be uh, conveyed to you by mail probably around June 1st when the role is made tentative. And of course, if you have any concerns about the value or the results, you still have the option to speak with Fernando as the assessor and to file a grievance with the Board of Assessment Review. I believe grievance day this year in Ossining is going to be June 21st. So again, very, very important that you read that notice and you carefully consider if you think the value is appropriate. I'll just add that once the tentative role is filed, and of course you go through grievance, these new assessments will be used for 2017 tax purposes. So the first tax bill that everybody in the town will receive using the new role will be the April 2017 town county bills, and of course the September 2017 uh, school bills, because your September 2016 school bill will still be based on the town's 2015 final roll, which is before the reassessment. So with that, hopefully I've given you a good general sense of what will be happening, and I will uh, turn, okay, Tyler, who will do a little presentation. This is Melissa Baer, who is the project manager for Tyler. Good evening, everyone. Uh, John stole a little bit of my thunder, so I apologize. We're going to have a little repetition in this presentation. I'm going to talk a lot about uh, what he just covered. Um, it's been a really long project. We've uh, collected a lot of pieces of data, uh, analyzed a lot of sales and income information. Um, and if you think about what we've done, we've done Greenberg as well at the same time. We've looked at 38,000 properties. Uh, I've already spoken to some taxpayers that were concerned that maybe we were biased towards our own values because, you know, we do care about what we do and, and uh, we want them to be accurate and, and equitable. But not every property sold. I guarantee you not every one of your properties sold. So we have to make some, some estimations of what the market would do for your specific property. So there's information that we may not have had. The specific condition of your property, maybe you've got some water damage or you need a sump pump. There's information we might just not have. So we really do encourage you to come in and, and don't be, uh, don't feel like we're not going to listen to your concerns, that we won't make changes. Uh, we typically do make a, a considerable number of changes during the informal process. We also make changes to properties even for those that don't appeal. If someone comes in and says, you know, our, our street's really, really high traffic and you haven't accounted for that, we'll adjust every property on that street. So, you know, we, we take our job seriously. We want them to be accurate and equitable. So uh, if you don't feel like we've treated you fairly, please come in. Um, we'll, we'll hear you out and we'll consider what you've done and, and hopefully we'll uh, come to a resolution that you agree with. So I have to look at this, oops, and I pushed it. So we're going to mail these notices on March 14th. So that's uh, just about two weeks from today. And they will be mailed to all property owners. So what that means is we have 38,000 notices going out on the same day. Uh, we are going to have some heavy call volume. So um, we do hope that you'll be patient with us. We have a lot of people answering the phones. Uh, but those first few days, it's going to be really busy. So you may want to you know, take a couple days take a look at what you've got. Concurrent with those notices being issued, we're going to have the website. We're revamping the entire website to include all the valuation data. So if you visited our website already, you know we have property inventory data. Well, now we're going to have all that valuation data. So you're going to have access to the comparables that were used if your property was valued by market. Um, and we're going to have uh, all the values from your neighbor's property so you can judge whether you've been assessed equitably. Um, so take a take a day, two weeks, whatever, you know, as long as it's before April 8th, to take a look at that information. Uh, we'll have some sales information for you too. So you can do your due diligence and still have an opportunity to make an appointment because um, it will be a little busy those first few days. So the date of value is July 1st, 2015. So whatever the market has done since then, we're not capturing. We're looking at a market that's from July 1st, 2013 to 2015. Those are the two years we're trying to capture. 
Um, what we found is that the market has not um, changed significantly in that time period. It's actually flattened out a little bit. Um, but if you have a, a recent appraisal that shows that the market has changed considerably in your area in that year, um, just keep in mind that we are looking at a data value of July 1st, 2015, so a year ago. Um, we, you can't just show up at our hearing, hearing site. Uh, we do anticipate having very full schedules. We want to accommodate everybody. We will do our very, very best to schedule everyone with an appointment, um, but you do need an appointment with us. And as John mentioned, we will have nights and we will have Saturday appointments. Um, we do have a, a letter, so you'll have a cover letter. In addition, I have a, a sample of uh, in the next coming slides that's going to talk a little bit about how to to, to file the appeal, what we're comparing, uh, because as you know, your assessment is multiplied by an equalization rate, so you will have a comparison of apples to apples, so you know what the equalized value is versus what the new 100% new value is, as well as what an estimated tax impact will be. Uh, this is not an accurate tax of what your tax will be because the budget hasn't been set, um, but it is an estimate to give you some kind of idea of what your taxes may do. There's a copy of the letter, which of course you can't read because it's much too small, but you'll have to wait until March 14th. Keep in suspense. So this is the actual impact notice that gives you the information. It tells you what exemptions are on the property. So your exemptions, if they've been filed, will be reflected on this notice. Uh, what the 2016 market value, 100% market value, there's no equalization rate needed. Uh, we do not talk about exemptions or taxes. So if you feel like there's an exemption that hasn't been applied, you do need to speak to the assessor's office. Unfortunately, we're not able to help you with that. So don't call and make an appointment for that specific issue. We will won't be able to help you with that. And there is an estimate of what your taxes would be using the new assessment. So again, it's not an accurate reflection of what your new tax will be because we just can't estimate that without knowing what the budget is. But it should give you some idea of what, uh, what kind of shift in your taxes it's going to be. So there's the phone number. It's the same phone number that we've had throughout the project. You can find a link to our website um, on the Town of Austin's website. Uh, I'm going to have our website at the end here. So it's 1-800-273-8605. And again, they're going to be a little busy. We are open from 9 to 5. So. Um, we, I don't believe that you can leave a message, so you do need to call us. But we do also have an email address that's available from the website. If, if you have a hard time calling us during those hours, shoot us an email, and we'll, we'll try to coordinate, make an appointment for you. April 8th. So we're really sorry we have to give you a deadline, but we do want to make sure we can accommodate everybody, so we can't just keep taking phone calls. Uh, we got to make sure that we have enough hearing officers available that we, uh, and we do have a limited time, um, as much as we'd love to give everybody uh, months to look over this, we do have a deadline, which is, of course, the tentative role has to be filed by June 1st. So we anticipate there being hundreds, maybe thousands of appeals that we have to go through. We have to make whatever changes we need to make. Um, so that's going to take us time, too. So that's why uh, we do have to have a deadline. So we apologize for that. We will be holding those meetings through the end of April. Uh, if we need to go into the first week of May, that's about all the time that we'll have. Um, so that's when we'll... Uh, that's the amount of time that you'll have. So now that you, you know that you have a couple of weeks to do this information, to look at what you have, to put your case together, um, and that's how much time we'll be able to accommodate you. Again, we'll, we're going to be at the library, and we will have nights and Saturdays. Those typically fill up pretty fast, so if you need one of those, you might want to call early. The notice has a lot of information that we're going to use to schedule, so we're going to make sure that we have the right owner with the right property. If you have multiple properties, please make sure you tell the person that. Um, you know, if you just give them the one property, the hearing officer isn't going to have all your properties with you. They're also not going to have the properties of any of your neighbors. So when you meet with one of our uh, appraisers, they're going to have your property card. They're going to have some general sales information. If it's uh, a residential property that used market, we'll have the comp sheet, what comparables were used for your property. But you can't say, well, my neighbor has this. They're not going to have your neighbor's property. So if there is some comparison that you want to make, uh, you can print off information from the website 
use that as part of your information that you want to submit for your hearing. Um, but we won't have um, computers or anything like that available. And if you want to submit any documents, please provide copies, because uh, we may not have a copier either. So if you want to submit an appraisal or pictures, um, you know, please have copies with you so we can keep those. <laughs> Phone lines are going to be busy. So um, and hey, I covered that other thing too. Make sure you tell us all of your properties. So they generally take 15 to 20 minutes. We don't cut anybody off, um, but generally speaking, um, you state your case. If you have specific questions, we can certainly answer um, some of those questions for you. Um, but it takes about 15 to 20 minutes for an appointment. Uh, it's very important. Um, we don't want you to go out and pay for an appraisal unless you really want to. You don't need to have an attorney. You don't need to have someone represent you. If you do need someone to represent you, we will need an authorization letter. So if you're not the owner of a property, if you want to have one of those representatives that uh, Fernando was talking about, if you're going to have someone other than the owner of the property, pre please authorize that person to uh, appeal in your behalf uh, so that we can hear that appeal. But the types of information that we're interested in is Sales information, that's what we based it on. So if you've had appraisal done, then submit that. Uh, not a five-year-old appraisal, but one done in the last two years, that would be very helpful to us. And again, bring a copy. Uh, there's generally about four or five pages of that appraisal that we need. The one that gives the information about your house, the one that lists the comparables that were used, and make sure that I have the date of the appraisal and the actual amount that it was appraised for. But you know, these can be pretty thick, and we don't need all that extra documentation at the end. So if you want to submit a recent appraisal, if you've had your house on the market and it didn't sell, um, bring in your, your agreement, your sales agreement, uh, or the, the listing history. You can submit other properties that are similar to yours that if you feel like your assessment isn't in line with your neighbors, bring in those neighbors. We'll check it out. We'll see if there's something, some inconsistency in how the data was, was entered for your property. And if, if we find that that's true, then we'll correct that. Um, so those are the types of things. So uh, the, the most difficult thing for us is when someone comes in and says, I don't know what the value of my property is, but I know that's too high. So <laughs> that's really tough for us. You know, we'll, we want to help you out. We really do. You know, we want, if, if it has something to do, and it's even okay if you don't know, if you say, hey, you know, you have my house in good condition, and I got cracked walls, and I've got, so bring us pictures. That's, uh, so there are a couple things. You can look at the data of your property, um, and condition is a very important thing. That's going to change the value of your house. If, if your house is really dated, if you have a 60s kitchen, um, you know, that, that's going to affect what someone pays for your house. So bring us pictures. Uh, we may ask to do an inspection, as, as John mentioned, to verify that information. Uh, if we have you down for a finished basement, you don't have one that's going to affect your value. So look at the data. Uh, make sure we have it accurate. If, if we don't, let us know. Bring us some pictures. Um, any kind of sales data. You know, it's, it's not too, too hard to do this job. You find properties that have sold that are like yours. Uh, make sure they're like yours. Uh, you know, don't, if you have a ranch, don't bring me a bunch of colonials or vice versa. Um, they, they should be a similar style, similar age, similar size, and in a similar area. Um, if you live in, in Briarcliff, you probably don't want to bring something from, you know, the village of Austining. So it's really important that it's an area specific. But if you find sales or properties that you find are similar, that can show that's exactly what we do. This is what other properties similar to mine sold for, and you have mine higher or lower. Every once in a while, someone says we have it too low. Um, so that is information. And we'll have all that information for you. We'll have some spreadsheets out there with sales information for you so that you can do your own analysis uh, if you like to do that sort of thing. Um, I, I've been doing this job for a long time and uh, I've gotten PowerPoints and I've gotten binders and uh, whatever information you think is going to prove your point, please submit that um, and we'll, we'll look over every piece of that information. But um, if you come in and say it's just too high, that makes it really tough for us. So I think I might have covered all that. All right. Prop commercial property owners, I don't know if I have any of those in here, but um, commercial property in general, we use income information. Uh, so 
they're a little bit easier for us because it's really just math. It's not uh, it's much of a judgment call. Uh, you know, I rent my office space for $20 a square foot. I have this much in expenses. Um, it makes it a little bit easier. I have this much vacancy. So uh, if you're a commercial property owner and you don't agree with your assessment, you need to supply us. If you're an income generating property, you're going to have to submit an income statement to us or we're not going to make any changes to your commercial property because that's the basis of what we use. Uh, we did not get very many uh, income and expense returns. So we, we didn't have a lot of market data to base it on. So that's very important for us for commercial properties. Now, condo properties. I don't know how many condo owners I have out here. So whether we go homestead or not is going to determine how you appeal your property. So if the, if the decision uh, after this meeting is to not go homestead, don't come in and, and argue the comparables because there will be comparables for every condominium whether or not the homestead or non-homestead is selected. Um, so if your assessment is based on income, that is what you'll have to appeal on. So if um, you know we don't go homestead, it's an income-based generated assessment. So we're going to talk about rents. We're going to talk about what uh, a similar apartment would rent for, and it's a complex-wide uh, value. So how we do a condominium complex with an income is we treat the entire thing as if it were an apartment. So we value the entire thing as if it was under one owner. They're not individually owned units. They're as they would be an apartment. So if they rent for $3,000 a month for a two-bedroom, that's how we're going to value them, and that's how you have to appeal them. So uh, if you come in and say, these are not comparable units, that's not helpful to us because we're not using a market-based value. So obviously, the homestead decision is going to change how you appeal your property. So you'll need to know that, which you will. And your notice will reflect whatever the decision is. It's going to tell you that assessment. So if, if it's not homestead, then your assessment will be based on the income. I think we're going to wait till the end for questions. Sorry. <laughs> So if you can't attend, so there's a couple of things. If, if you're not going to be around during that time, we can do phone hearing. So we'll be happy to call you during your scheduled time. We can do that over the phone. Um, if you want to email us information ahead of time, um, that is certainly acceptable. You can mail in information. We'll treat it the exact same way as if you're sitting with us. Um, you know, unfortunately, with the mail, we can't really ask, answer your questions. So. Um, the telephone operators are telephone operators. They are not going to answer questions. They are not going to be able to explain anything. All they can do is schedule an appointment for you. Um, we, as you can guess, 38,000, we cannot answer everyone's phone call, uh, answer questions over the phone. So if you have questions, you do need to come in and make an appointment. Even if you're just curious about how it was done, please come in, take advantage of, of our experts. Uh, they'll explain it to you. Uh, and then you can make a decision of whether or not you agree with it or not. Um, but uh, yeah, just don't call and, and ask the telephone operator. They're not going to be able to help you. So it has to be postmarked by April 22nd, so we have time to look at that information. And then at the end, we sort of put all this stuff together, because what we want to look for are patterns. So if we have a whole subdivision or a whole neighborhood coming in, uh, we know there's probably some, something up with that. So um, it is, we, do take, we don't take each one of them separately. At the end, we put them all together, we look for those patterns, and we try to correct everything that we can possibly correct, because at the end of the day, we really want this to be accurate and equitable for everyone. We will send uh, a new notice to everybody that appealed, everybody who has changed, because almost always there are people that their assessments have changed as a result of someone else's appeal. Uh, generally speaking, uh, they go down, but not always. Uh, if you come in and you say, well, I have central air conditioning, you're sus and we don't have you listed, it will go up. So uh, it is possible. It, it doesn't happen a lot, but uh, it is possible for assessments to go up during the informal process. So uh, keep that in mind. And again, the data is on the website. So you will have uh, the information at your fingertips of what we have on your property. Uh, and so if you have central air, and I don't have a list, I want to know because I care about <laughs> consistency and equity. 
we will uh, mail out those final notices before June 1st because you need to know whether or not you want to go on to your next step if the informal process. Now, you don't have to come to an informal to, to do a formal appeal, but we certainly encourage you to do so because a lot of times we can take care of your ish issue before you have to go to Grievance Day or do a formal appeal. So, um, you know, it's certainly worth 15 minutes of your time to sit with one of our appraisers. So again, you can go to the Board of Assessment Review. You would appeal between June 1st and the 21st. You must appeal by June 21st in order to have your appeal heard for this, for this year. And I think we're not going to have questions, right? OK. MMRC.TylerTech.com. Uh, again, all that information will be available on March 14th when we mail out those notices. And I'll be happy to take questions after. I would encourage anybody, oh, sorry. Anybody in the back, if you could come in and stand on the sides, make room for the other people. Great. Girls basketball team. Yasin High School girls basketball team has won. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Jeffrey, for that update. Um, okay, so based on the presentation, I'm going to refer us back now to the pie chart that we saw. As a result of the reval, um, we are not seeing a significant shift between property classes with the non homestead scenario. In other words, if we were to do nothing, the balance between property classes as a portion of the whole would remain effectively the same. This would have the least disruptive impact on our community and would essentially maintain the status quo. Before we proceed further this evening, the board would like to be polled to weigh in on whether to consider taking formal action to adopt the homestead option. Adopting homestead, as it was explained earlier, would change the way we classify condominiums and change the balance of property classes in our community. If the board chooses not to adopt homestead, we can leave well enough alone and take no formal action to pursue the homestead option. Board members, when I call your name, please say homestead or no homestead. Uh, Councilwoman DeTori? No homestead. Councilwoman Jeffrey? No homestead. Councilman Welcher? Councilwoman Feldman? No homestead. OK. Thank you very much. So in view of the board consensus, <laughs> in view of the board consensus, we see no need to take formal action on homestead. And we'll ask our town assessor that the impact notices and subsequently the final assessment role be re prepared to reflect no change. Now, before we go on to the audience, is there any board member that would like to comment before we open it up to the public? Alternately, we can come back to the board for comments after we hear from the public. Anything to comment? Comments? Okay. Councilman Feldman? Hi. I just want to say that I hope everybody really takes a very close look at their evaluation um, and contacts Tyler uh, that your appraisals are what is being used and really take the time to make sure it reflects your property. And if you have any questions or comments, like Tyler said, please do contact them. Now, this is your time to not have to go through a whole formal process with any of these people that send you mailings every day of the week. This is the time that you can just say, hey, let me sit down and, and get an understanding and tell you that, you know, this doesn't reflect my property or it does. And I really want to make sure each and every person takes a close look at them and, and talks to them if they feel they need to. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, now we have a sign-up sheet. If there's anybody interested in, in coming up and asking a question, we ask that you approach the podium and sign your name. And if uh, 
Uh, anybody who wants to take this opportunity now, because you don't feel like standing up and you're and you were waiting to hear how we were going to determine that, feel free to to exit if you'd like, um, and uh, make some more room for folks who might want to come in and ask a question. But if you do want to ask a question, if you need to come, okay. And Melissa, Melissa wants to come up first before anybody else. I had to wait for the decision. Okay. Um, with the non-homestead, you guys all saw the pie chart. And one may think that, hey, nothing's changing. Um, but things did change, where there were shifts within the class. And I think that's really important for you to understand that um, residential, everybody's residential assessment didn't go up 1%. Uh, what we found, we, we talked a lot, for those of you who had attended meetings before, of what the rule of thumb was. It was almost exactly that. 33% stayed the same. 33% went up and 33% went down. Um, so there were shifts within the classes, within commercial classes, within residential classes. Um, so individual property owners are going to see a change. I didn't want that part chart to, to um, you know, make anyone think that you know we did this for nothing, because we certainly did. We picked up a lot of inventory, um, and there were a lot of shifts in certain areas between certain decades of houses and that type of thing. So I wanted to make sure that I, I shared that with all of you uh, before you you leave so go ahead <laughs> all right now if I only see one person who's interested in asking a question if you could approach the mic and just face it towards you so we can hear you and please state your name and hi my name is Mike Vaughn I live at uh, 116 Woodsbrook Circle I don't have a question I have a statement I would like to make um, back in October a group of condominiums all got together and organized a Meet the Candidates night. And at that night, the three candidates, new members of the, of the board who were running, each of you stood up and said unequivocally that you were very much in favor of the revaluation project, but that you did not believe that you would implement Homestead. A lot of people took you at your word and voted for you. And I'm just here to, tonight to say when this meeting was scheduled, there was a lot of skepticism and, oh, my gosh, what are they doing? Are they going to back down on what they said? And I would like to go on record on behalf of all of the people who came to the library to meet you on that October night. Thank you very much. You stuck to your word, and we appreciate it. Could, could I, I just, before uh, anybody leaves, I just want to say one thing. I had, I have, uh, I never heard much of Homestead Act and uh, all that kind. The most homestead I ever heard about was they had cattle. <laughs> but I've heard and learned enough now, I, <laughs> I think I could talk about it intelligently. And I'm, the only thing I wanted to say is that we put in some long hours, and no, we did not always agree. There was a lot of time we sway one way and we'd sway back the other, but finally it come together, and we did what we believed was the best thing to do. Thank you. That, that's all. My name is Lynn Farrell, 226 Horseshoe Circle, Ossining. I'd like to join Mike in thanking you guys for honoring your promise to the condo owners. But I do have a question before we all leave tonight. It might be more appropriately addressed to Mr. Gonzalez. After we have the informal appeal, if that should happen, and sometimes rental values have gone up over the years, so it's a possibility that condos could go up. He talked, they talked about a grievance proceeding with the town assessor. Generally, condominiums have not been handled the same way as private homeowners. Can condominiums avail themselves not only of the informal proceeding with Tyler, but also the more formal proceeding with Mr. Gonzalez? I'm going to let Mr. Gonzalez answer that question. <laughs> uh, uh, in fact, this is what Melissa was referring to, that if the Homestead, uh, if the Homestead Act had been passed, then the condos would be valued as uh, based on the market approach, and then you could individually bring comps and uh, 
have a conversation about your value, but under the current law, the homestead will be valued as if they were an apartment building, what they could be rented for. So in order to make a correct uh, estimation of value for a whole apartment complex, we would need rental data for the whole complex. Yes, I think Tyler would be glad to discuss the whole complex with one individual who has all the data. If you're able to do so, gather the data and bring the information forward, either Tyler or, or myself will be ready to uh, sit down and compare numbers with you as far as the rental income of the whole complex and what its potential value would be and how that total value would be uh, brought down to the individual unit levels. Okay. Abby Bergman, 51 Deerfield Lane. I'd like to uh, echo the sentiments from the others uh, about <coughs> your keeping your campaign promises. Very much appreciated. I do have a question about condo valuations, though. Um, when you say it's the whole complex, for example, let's say it, it, within a complex, our assessments are very different depending on our individual units. So let's say that data was not captured properly. For example, let's say a unit was listed as a three-bedroom versus a two-bedroom, that, that rental income would be different. So how are you going to adjudicate those differences when already there are major differences among different units within a condo complex? And then do we have the right to the informal hearing if we feel that our individual unit was not assessed properly? Because... Within, as I say, within a condo, you do not have all of the units assessed the same. There's wide variation. I know that within my own complex, I'm paying something like uh, $8,200 in tax, and other neighbors are paying 58 even without any other exemptions. When we value the condos, uh, the bedroom count is very important So that because that's how apartments are rented. So um, we did gather the data the best we could. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what our, our entry rate in, in the, the town as a whole was somewhere between 55 and 60 percent. So um, we did use the information that we had on the number of bedrooms for each unit, and then the, that was used to come up with the complex value. It's allocated by your percent interest. So uh, your argument wouldn't go very far other than you could argue the rents that we use. You could argue whether we had the bedroom counts, right? And if, you, if someone in your complex has all that information for us, um, you know, to make sure that we had it right, that's great. But how it's allocated is by your percent interest. Um, so that's how it's done. Mm -hmm. The variation is just between your percent interest. How, what your percent common interest in the condominium co complex. So when you purchase your unit, you have a percent interest. And that percent interest does not change based on whether you've updated your unit, whether you've changed the number of bedrooms of your unit. It stays. If you finished your basement, you still have the same percent interest. And that's how we allocate it. <laughs> I'm sorry, can I just clarify? Because you said one person uh, could come to you from a, from a condominium complex, mm -hmm. but you also said that it's based on interest. Mm -hmm. Who sets the interest? That when uh, the condo is declared, uh, each the offering plan dictates so. what the common interest is. Okay, so it's not the condo association. In other words, you wouldn't appeal it to the condo association. And once again, this goes no, back but they to may have the information of how many bedrooms are in each unit. They that 
so, information. And, and just to clarify, you said if changes were made, it wouldn't change your interest in the overall. Correct. So someone you, could appeal, like if one, one condo owner could come in, give us all the information for the entire complex that would, um, you know, encourage us or, or would in, um, convince us to make a change. That change would be applied to every condo unit because it's allocated from all of them. I think, you know, could you, could you come back up to the microphone because um, nobody could really hear what you're, yeah. I've, I've looked at the entire role for our complex, for example, and I have the largest unit, but there are many people who have the largest unit, there are end units, and the variation within our assessed valuation within those largest units is quite broad. Now, we have a legalized basement. Maybe other people don't have legalized basements, but um, there is still wide variation within that particular unit, the same unit within the complex, and the variation is not small. I can show you, as I say, I've read the role, I know my neighbors, I know their, their units, there's quite a disparity. So how is that handled? You can call me, okay. if that's true, after the reassessment. <laughs> how about that? <laughs> I can only speak to how we did it, uh, and I know that that's how it was done. We had one value is allocated by the percent interest, and that's how it was done. So I, you know, I do know, and you know, for the 2016 role, that's how it was done. You'll have access to all that information, so you can check that. <laughs> yes, for the informal process, because it is informal. Um, you know, if you you have to give information on the entire complex. You can't just give me the information on your one unit um, because we are valuing it as, a, as if it were an apartment building. So if you've got that information, if you're saying this is the you know, comparable rents, or even if you have rents within your complex, that'd be great. Um, then yeah, we will consider that absolutely. I just want to make one point. The, the percentage interest is what was uh, uh, put together when the prospectus was uh, offer or rather the offering plan was put together but one thing I want to make sure that that everybody understand our aim is to get it correct to do the right thing so if our data or information is not correct by all means let us know and we will make sure that the inventory that we have on the individual units is correct as Melissa said it may not impact your your assess value to the down to the individual unit because is that is based on the on your percent interest. But if in the future any of the condo complexes reapply and readjust the percentage interest, by all means let us know and then we will redistribute the total taxable value of the building again into the units. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lillian Nahas, 52 Deerfield Lane, and uh, I know that this process has been an enormous headache for the town board, an enormous undertaking, and I'd like to thank you all for not only sticking to your promise, but more importantly, not um, doing what is best for one particular group, but doing what is best for the town as a whole. I really think your decision will benefit the town as a whole, and that's what you're charged with, so thank you. We appreciate all of that, and I do think that uh, just you know, again, that we we all all of us are have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that we are um, doing what is best for everybody who lives here and works here and has businesses here. And um, it's with that in mind that um, this uh, decision was made, I believe. Uh, good evening. My name is Wendy Cohen. I live at Twenty Three Hudson Watch, which is actually a homeowners association. And to the point other gentlemen had made, within that complex, there are people that are paying way less than others for the same exact layout. And I think at the end of the day, this should have all been leveled out or equalized. Because when I'm paying close to $15,000 to live in a townhouse, it doesn't seem right. And the assessment, whatever the value of my home is, people can afford to buy the, con or the townhouse, but they can't afford over $1,000 in taxes every month. So I think even though when the 
uh, prospectus was put out, we are being taxed as homeowners. And I just don't think it's right. We are homeowners, but we're being taxed on all that land in the front of the complex, and we're all paying for that. So right. The way I understand it is that the reassessment will take all of that into consideration and that this may work out for you. Um, I think that you should wait for the numbers, and it, it's meant to more evenly distribute all the properties in town, which is why we were in favor of it. So when Tyler has taken a look at all of the properties and all of the condos and all of the businesses, um, in theory, they're all going to be valued for the same size equally in the same area. So, so some of my neighbors may be going up. And some of your neighbors. I, I, I'm not exactly sure how your unit will work, but the whole point of the evaluation was to make sure that these discrepancies were changed. Okay. So I think that you should wait for the numbers, and if you still feel that it came out differently than your neighbors, then absolutely call them. Thank you. Hi. Uh, Steve Obaro, 170 Revolutionary Road. Um, obviously, you guys have had major issues that had to do with condos and the homestead thing and so on and so forth. It doesn't feel like it affects me as a property, a homeowner property, a single family home. Um, I just want to clarify what I, th my understanding of what I think of the big picture. So we saw a pie chart before. It said residential homes, uh, single family residential homes are 70%, condos are 8%, businesses 22%, and the pie is X big. After the reassessment, the pie is really no bigger, correct? Okay, it still stays the same. So the idea that, that all, it's, there was never a movement to bring all assessments up to a higher level in order to enable higher taxes across the board. Is that correct? It's a redis redistribution of... The, the of way the values. The values, okay. correct. So within the pie. So big picture question. My home in the in the fifteen, twenty years that I've lived there had been reassessed three times in a ten year period. Um, the former owner didn't have a CO on the deck, so it needed to be re reassessed for us to buy it. We did some renovation, it was reassessed, something else came up, I forget what it was, it was reassessed. Okay, so our assessment was fairly current, reasonably high. We had neighbors down the street who had a bigger house, three times the property, a swimming pool, and a rental property, and they were paying a third of the taxes that we were paying. That house has since sold. That situation may be beyond us. But my question is, does the reassessment, does the process that we just went through look at that house my house and the houses that have been renovated without a building permit and say okay we're going to bring some equity so that everybody's on a level playing field with the pie remaining the same and fernando would you like to answer that question you understood my right yes uh, that is correct the reassessment notice that you will be getting on the week of the 14th should indicate what the current market or the market value of your property is as of July 1st, 2015. So all those inequities that you describe should be corrected. So basically the estimate of value that you will get should reflect what, what you should be able to sell your house for and what your neighbor, whatever the situation is, uh, what the, the fair market value uh, should be. Uh, as far as uh, inventory changes, whether they had a permit or not, we assess based on what we see. So if, the, if, if when the inspection was done, uh, evidence is that it's a two-family house, it will be valued as a two-family house. All this information eventually will get to the uh, building department since various building departments because we share information and they will address the situation if there are legalities to be addressed. But yes, the purpose of this reassessment is to bring fair and equitable values that will in turn provide fair and equitable tax taxation where everybody will only pay the fair share. Are there any other questions? 
No further questions. Seeing none, I will now like to uh, give my my uh, colleagues up here a chance to make any comments that they would like. Um, otherwise, does anybody have anything they want to say? No, I, I, I think you, you said it extremely well, Madam Supervisor. I think that Councilwoman Feldman also said it. Uh, the decision making is based in our minds on what is in the best interest of all the entirety of the town of Ossining and all of the constituents in it to be fair and equitable across. And that's what our decision was based on. So. So uh, I thank you all for attending tonight. I do have a couple of additional announcements I'd like to make. Um, I just want to remind you once again that the um, impact statements will be going out um, in the next uh, March 15th, I believe, 14th, March 14th. And so look in the mail for an envelope that says Town of Austin on it. And I don't think it says anything except for Town of Austin, and it might have a little window in it. Um, important. Important assessment information. So please look out for that. Um, I wanted to let you all know that um, we just found out that uh, the that Sustainable Westchester conducted a successful energy bid process and has finalized the terms for the Con Ed service territory for the community choice aggregation. Um, 18 municipalities with Con Edison service signed the contracts, um, and it covers over 90,000 homes and small businesses. Um, Bedford, Greenberg, Hastings, Irvington, Larchmont, Mamaroneck, Town and Village, Mount Kisco, Newcastle, New Rochelle, Austin Town and Village, Pelham, Pleasantville, Rye Brook, Rye Brook, Somers, Tarrytown, and White Plains. We're still finalizing the term for the they are still finalizing the terms for the Nice Egg service territory, which is not relevant for you, but that includes. Bedford, Lewisboro, North Salem, and Somers. Prices for the Con Edison service territory for both the default supply rate and the 100% renewable supply rate were below the benchmark, which was the average Con Edison supply rate for the past 12 months. So in other words, residents in the Westchester Smart Power Program will be saving money whether they stay with the default supply or if they up, opt up to the 100% renewable supply rate. So you have a choice, and if you make the choice to, to go 100% renewable, you're still going to be getting a better rate than you were before for your, electri for your electricity. This is an opt-out program um, uh, with... In other words, if you're in Con Edison right now, you would automatically get switched into the Westchester Smart Power Program unless you choose to stay with Con Edison, which would guarantee you a lower rate. You then could opt in to having the 100% renewable supply rate or the regular rate. The prices will be fixed for the next 24 months, starting in May 2016 and we will have more details for you shortly. Um, so it's exciting news that we're going to be having some better rates offered as a result of this um, consortium. And uh, we look forward to bringing you more news on that in the future. And um, look for more information coming out with your bills. Then I wanted to just make another quick announcement. Again, Austin High School girls basketball team won. Yay! <laughs> um, we have a great event coming up um, starting this Weekend, March 4th, Fridays and Saturdays at 8, Sundays at 3 p.m., the Living Art event, which takes place at the Steamer uh, Firehouse Gallery, 117 Main Street. It's a combination of theater and fine art and um, with Westchester Collaborative Theater and the Austin Arts Council, I encourage you all to go online and look for tickets either on the Austin Arts Council website or the Westchester Collaborative Theater WCT um, or wctheater.org website. Um, great moments in the Hudson Valley in Hudson Valley architecture is coming to Briarcliff Manor Public Library starting this or on Thursday, March 3rd is part one from seven to eight and Tuesday, March 15th, part two from seven to eight. And that sounds like it's going to be really exciting. One of the things I wanted to let you know is um, we've been receiving a number of notices from Con Edison recently about imposters. Uh, they're warning customers to beware of imposters claiming to be from the company and seeking to enter a home or business. We've received many notices from them, so I'm concerned that this might affect you. So please make sure that you know all Con Edison employees carry identification cards with their photo, name, and the company's name and logo. If you see 
uh, on identification and still have doubts about the person's legitimacy, please call Con Edison at 1-800-75-CONED before you let the person into your home or business. And if you suspect a person is falsely claiming to be a Con Edison employee, please call the local police department. And we thank them for being here tonight. Um, and then I just want to let you know, um, uh, an Austin resident is performing as part of uh, the Mike Del Judas and Big Shot uh, Billy Joel Band. So they, he actually sings with, uh, Mike Del Judas sings with Billy Joel, I guess, and he also has his own band. And um, Mark Feinberg is an excellent saxophonist in town. He performs with them on April 8th, Friday, April 8th. They're going to be performing at the Paramount Hudson Valley Theater. Tickets are going fast, so if you love Billy Joel, like I do, make sure you get your tickets. Um, I think I just want to say thank you so much. This has been a very long process, and um, we know that the uh, previous town board, it was a big and heavy lift uh, to take on a reassessment. But it really does set us um, ready for the future, and I'm very um, proud of everybody's participation in the process and all the hard work, and I want to thank the assessor's office. I want to thank ORPS. I want to thank Tyler Technologies for all the work that you've put into this um, to get us to this point. We know there's a lot more work to come, and as Melissa mentioned, um, you know, not everybody is going to be happy, but we're hope, hoping that we're going to get to fairness and equity for everybody and everybody have, having transparency in their assessment so you know where you stand. So we appreciate all of your, your time and effort and energy and look forward to more conversations in the near future. Thanks very much to everybody and have a great night. And Haberman, I'm sorry if you guys mentioned